Prepping for SHTF style scenarios means having logistics ready for the long term in case you're not able to access those supply chains we're all so used to any longer. And that applies to weapons as well. Do you have the ability to keep the weapons you have up and running and maintain them for the long term during a full on SHTF situation? And that's what we're gonna talk about today. Gun parts that every prepper should have on hand, specifically related to an AR-15 and today's example, a Glock, but any double stack striker fire polymer pistol is gonna to apply to basically the same logic here. Now, before we get started, I do wanna mention that the channel's biggest supporter is Midway USA, and this video in particular was sponsored by them. So big thanks to Midway USA, where you can get a lot of the parts that we're discussing in today's video. Now, an AR-15, should be in every prepper's inventory, just because of how easy they are to work on and how good they are in the sense of logistics, because I can get parts and accessories and everything else you would want for an AR-15 very easily at this point in time in the United States. So what parts would you wanna have on hand for your AR-15 to keep it up and running during that type of scenario? Well, first off, AR Stoner is an in-house brand by Midway USA, and it's a budget entry level type brand, right? Very much along the lines of other brands like Bear Creek Arsenal, let's just say. But when it comes to some of the most basic components, sometimes that's not the biggest deal, right? So quality does matter, but some components are just what they are. And honestly, you can save yourself some money because these are backup parts more so than your go-to parts, correct? This is a Wilson Combat Ranger AR-15, so a really nice high quality AR-15, but this is an AR Stoner. AR-15 Ultimate Repair Kit, which has just about everything you might need in order to repair an AR-15, either in the field or at your workbench, to keep it up and running. Now, this is $30, which really isn't that bad to be able to have all these spare parts ready to go, which is why the AR-15 is such a good option for preppers, okay? So what comes in this? Well, here's some of the most important parts that it has that you might need to replace during a long-term situation where you're using your weapon on a regular basis, which I hope never happens. And if you are using it on a regular basis and you get to the point where you actually need to maintain it, well, good for you. You must be very good at what you do. Now, this particular kit has a firing pin, firing pin retaining pins. It has an extractor, which also has the extractor spring, the O-ring, the pin, and everything else you need for that. It's got three gas rings as well, and it's got a gas tube pin. So if you need to replace your gas tube, you can do that as well. And there's a lot of other parts in here, including trigger springs and magazine catch springs and everything else you might need to keep everything up and running. So a field repair kit or the AR-15 ultimate repair kit is a good idea and a good thing to have, and it's very inexpensive. And pretty much everything you're gonna talk about or see today is ex inexpensive. It's very affordable, which means you should have these things on hand because there's no really big reason not to, okay? Now, the next thing you might want is a backup gas tube. Not all gas tubes are the same. There's many different lengths. Maybe of carbine length, mid-length, rifle length. This is actually intermediate length, which is what Wilson Combat uses on their uppers, which is why I have an intermediate length gas tube as a backup. And this is actually Odin Works, and I think you can get gas tubes for around 12 bucks. They're very inexpensive, but the reason you might need a new gas tube is because this part was actually designed in many ways to fail before other components of your AR do. Why? Because this is what has almost all of the heat going through it when it comes to the operation of the firearm, because all the gas is ported through this tube. And so if you're in like a meltdown situation, the tube would melt before other critical components of the AR-15. So for $12, having an additional gas tube on hand, maybe not the worst idea, not to mention, the end that interacts with the gas key on your bolt carrier group can take a beating over time from that slamming action of the bolt carrier group coming forward and interacting with it. So once in a while, you might just need to replace it. Anyway, it is in very many ways somewhat of a wear and tear part. Now, another critical component you might wanna have for your AR-15 would be a bolt carrier group or a bolt carrier group repair kit of some kind where you have the bolt and you have everything else you might need to actually fully rebuild a bolt carrier group. However, Nowadays, because of how inexpensive bolt carrier groups can be, you can get a budget level bolt carrier group for almost the same price as having all the components to rebuild one anyway. Now this is not a budget bolt carrier group. This is actually a BCM bolt carrier group. And I think this runs about $190, but you can get entry level budget level bolt carrier groups for like 90 bucks. So I would almost just buy a whole nother bolt carrier group instead of worrying about stocking up on individual components because you can just throw that right in the gun and get back up and running without having to do any actual type of repair, which means in the field, if you were to carry a spare BCG with you, 
you'd be able to just throw it in the upper and get going instead of having to worry about what part of the bolt carrier group broke, right? And like I said, with the Ultimate Repair Kit, you get some of those components too, like the extractor, you get the gas rings, and some of the other things that usually have issues with the bolt carrier group anyway. So if you're gonna invest in the extra parts you might need, it's almost sensible at this point in time to spend a little more and just get a full on another bolt carrier group. Just my opinion, but you can do either way. Either way, I would suggest making sure you have the ability to keep your bolt carrier group up and running, okay? Now, that was it. I mean, yeah, you can go as far as saying maybe get an additional barrel in case you're worried about your barrel life. For example, this is a stainless steel 416R one and eight twist barrel, which means it might not last as long as a cold hammer forge barrel, but it will maintain match grade accuracy for longer than other barrels. So you have compromises and trade-offs, but still this barrel will likely last between 5,000 and 10,000 rounds before you start to see some degradation. So. I mean, I don't know how much shooting you're planning on doing in SHTF, but yeah, having an extra barrel on hand, maybe not the worst idea. So, what do you need for your pistol, your Glock, right? Which, we're just gonna call it a Glock, even if you have something similar to a Glock, because generally, that's what most people are using these days. Well, Glock's hard to beat when it comes to sourcing parts and components, and they're pretty easy to work on as well. Now, when it comes to Glock, there's a few things that you might wanna be able to have on hand that are very inexpensive. For example, one of the things that breaks on striker-fired pistols and pistols in general on a regular basis are extractors. And this extractor is $18, right? So for 18 bucks, you have another extractor, which means like that critical component of the firearm is easy to replace. And then in addition to that, you can get the extractor plunger and the extractor spring so that you have the entire extraction setup or the entire extraction uh, group ready to be rebuilt and put back together so that way you don't have to worry about not having proper extraction throughout the cycling process, right? And then other things you might want to buy for your Glock would include the trigger spring, slide lock spring, mag release spring, firing pin spring, and the recoil spring assembly, right? So, extractor's 18 bucks. The recoil spring assembly, which is, you know, going to take a beating after thousands of rounds and you'll have to replace it eventually, that's like 24 bucks. And then every other spring that I just listed is $5. $5. And of course, if you wanted to get a spare barrel, you could. But in general, you're not really going to burn through a handgun barrel like at any point. And if you do, you're shooting a lot. So of course, you might need to consider that. And then having a spare barrel might not be the worst thing just because. But I'm not saying you definitely need one. That's just my opinion. So that's all you really need in the sense of being able to keep your firearms up and running when it comes to maintenance and repairs. Yeah, there's other little small bits of minutia you can go into when it comes to some of these items, but if you get the ultimate AR-15 repair kit, you get a gas tube, you have a spare bolt carrier group, I mean, it's almost nothing else you might need. Possibly a new gas block. Those are very inexpensive as well. You can get them for like 20 bucks. And if that's the case, maybe it's just because over time it lost some of its shape and lost some of its seal in order to maintain as much gas pressure as it needs. There's a lot of little things that can happen there, but in general, those aren't gonna burn out either. I mean, we're talking about SHTF. You're not gonna be out at the range dropping thousands of rounds every single day like some of you claim to do right now. This is gonna be more of a survival situation where you're just hoping to maintain your weapon in the sense of being able to keep it up and running if there ever is something that needs to be repaired or replaced, right? Just my opinion. Obviously, if you have other ideas about what we should add to this list, put it in the comments below. Let me know. Uh, I think this is just the kind of stuff that we kind of you know need to be a little bit more on top of, right? It's easy to buy a Glock and maybe buy another Glock. That's another way to do it if you want. Or for, like I said, $62, you can have everything you might need to keep that Glock up and running rather than buying a whole nother pistol. Just an idea. The other thing you can do is, I don't know, just get another upper and have that ready to go. Because generally, your lower is probably going to outlast some of the components in your upper because that's where all the bang bang stuff happens, right? Just my thoughts. If you have anything to add, leave it in the comments below. If you want anything else from me, go to matchprepper.com. I also have subscribe star, which is five bucks a month in case you want to support the channel in an alternative way. And besides that, it's going to be it for Magic Prepper.